Very good. Well, welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I'll tell you what you do because although I, you you all been visiting, just just turn around and wave at one another and and smile. <laughs> now I think I think it's appropriate right now. Right now, I want you to do something for me. I want you to inhale. I'll start coughing. <laughs> Dunny, yes! All right, all right, all right, all right. Other, your, your excuse. Uh, I want you to inhale. And then exhale. Is that to read? Now, without, the election is over. <laughs> yes. Well, do I hear amen? Amen. Yes. Uh, although I have heard that some people have already announced for 2024. So we're starting the new campaign next week. Uh, okay. Well, uh, got a good time. Any announcements that anybody has to share before the service? We're still, uh, we've got this week and next week for the... Uh Yes, how did the food drive go? Right, but wasn't there a food drive? Well, they handed out the bags yesterday. Yesterday. They'll collect them this Saturday. Okay, yes. got it, got it. Okay, good. And, and what were you saying about, I'm sorry, what were next, you saying about? We've got uh, today and next Sunday to gather things. Okay. And then we'll ship them off. Ship them off. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. So you want to you want to take advantage of that. If anybody needs their lawn mowed, <laughs> I, I hear a young man does that. Uh, <laughs> well, let's then, as God's people, let's worship Him together. And I will tell you this before we do that: the uh, call to worship is the seventieth psalm. And I did. I was doing the worship service brilliant before I did here. And when we did that over there, it ended with me saying something. And I thought, geez, I never, it never ends with the leader saying something. And I see there was a line that either I missed or they missed, somebody missed uh, at the end. So we are going to do the complete 70th Psalm as our call to worship. So let's worship God together. Be blessed, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those be turned back and brought to dishonor who desire to hurt me. Let those who say, uh -huh, uh -huh, turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. But I am poor and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my God. Outstanding. Let's all stand and sing with a little bit of energy and enthusiasm. Blessed be the tie that binds. Y'all may be seated. 
I, I got to tell you, and you understand, I do the bulletin, I print the bulletin, so I take responsibility for mistakes. Uh, when I looked at the hymn, the first hymn we sang, it reminded me of the South, being in the South, bless me, the tie that binds. <laughs> <laughs> so it would sound, it sounded a little like something my grandmother would say, bless me. <laughs> so, yes, I, that's, that's on, on me, not the person. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> so, then, then as God, now God gives us a, a great opportunity before we hear his word read and proclaim to sort of clean ourselves out, to, to confess our sins to him uh, as a way of preparing ourselves to hear his word. And since we commit sins as individuals, but also as communities, it's right that we approach him in two ways. Uh, so let's approach him as God's people by praying the prayer in the, in the bulletin, and then we'll follow it with just a brief time for individual and personal prayer. So let's go before God now in prayer. Gracious God, we confess that we have sinned against you. You've equipped us to do the work we've been called to do. You've given us many opportunities to share your love, grace, and mercy to those around us. And yet we often hesitate. We're still when we could be active and silent when we could announce. As a result, we miss the chance to be your people within our community. Merciful Lord, forgive us and help us make good use of the opportunities we now have. Lord God, in this time that follows, hear now our prayers and Lord, have mercy upon us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for listening to us, and of course, thank you for loving us as much as you do. But right now, we thank you for forgiving us. In fact, you've not only forgiven us, you've cleansed us, and for that, we are incredibly grateful. And we know that it's happened because we've lifted these sins in the name of Christ our Savior. In his name, we now pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, hear the good news of the gospel. This saying is sure and worthy of universal acceptance, that Jesus Christ came to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that's good. Brothers and sisters, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Amen. While you all are standing, let's say together what we believe by reading the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You all may be seated. Uh, We've come to the part of the service when we can lift our own prayers to God. Now, are there any particular needs or concerns we might want to remember today and into the next week? Okay. Doris Bowles. Okay, we want to lift her up in our prayers. Thank you. How's your, how's Carl? Um, he's, right now he's in the hospital. They had to drain, they put a chest tube in and the fluid build up. But that's getting better and 
but he's very weak because he's been in bed all week, so his next move will be to Gables for a couple weeks to build his strength up. Okay. He does have a doctor's appointment on Tuesday with his cancer doctor, and we'll go for, he does have a pick line in, so hopefully we can get started on something. Good. How's his spirits? Um, depends on the day. Uh -huh. Yesterday, he was doing better. I was in there with him yesterday, the day before, not so good. But mm -hmm. yesterday was a good day for him, and he had ate well, so... Because you had said his spirits were, were kind of yeah. down. Uh, yeah. Well, it's we need to lift him up. Right. Lift him up in prayer. Any, anything else we want to remember? Oh, that's, that's, that's really tough. Uh, we want to remember her. It's, so, it's hard to say goodbye. Uh, and you mentioned that a, a friend of ours over in Weirton, and I'm going to mention it in the sermon. Uh, and it was it's unexpected, really unexpected. Uh, that we got word that he passed away yesterday, and he was really involved in the community. And it really leads to another thing that I think we need we need to pray about. Uh, he, it was COVID related, uh, and so not only was it did the virus contribute? He had other issues, but the virus contributed to it. He, like so many people now, are dying alone. Um, you know, his wife also had COVID. Uh, and so, you know, he died alone. Uh, and that's, that's a, not only is it terrible to die from this awful virus, but it's causing folks to families to deal with that isolation at death. And that's a, that's a, a, a terrible thing. And I think that we need to, as, as a people, and if Christians aren't praying about it, I don't know who will. Uh, and I believe prayer has power. Therefore, I think we need to really pray. Um, and, you know, like I said at the beginning, we had an election. We're moving into a new territory. Uh, I think we've got to... Pray, come together and, and pray and, and do the best we can as we move into the future. Um, I'm not sure fighting and scrapping is going to help, uh, but so maybe some sense of healing and unity might be appropriate as we uh, move into a new year. Um, well, with those things in mind, and, and also those folks, those children that are receiving those boxes, we certainly want to give a blessing. And, and we, we will have a blessing before we, we take them. Yeah, uh, because they, I think they need to be, be blessed. So uh, let's go to God now in prayer. And I'll open and, and pray for a little bit. Uh, then you all have the opportunity to lift these concerns to God. And we'll close by praying the Lord's Prayer. So as God's people, let's go before him now in prayer. Lord God, thank you so much for giving us a chance to be together this morning. What a wonderful opportunity it is to gather in your name, to feel your presence, to hear your word, and to enjoy the fellowship of your people. We want to we thank you, and we never want to take that for granted. So thank you so much for giving us a chance to be together today. Now, Lord, in just a little bit, we're going to hear your word read and proclaimed. And in that word, we're going to, we're going to hear a challenge. Uh, and it's one that we kind of prayed about a little bit earlier when we conf confessed our sins. But uh, it's related to the, the next step. It's one thing to confess. It's the next step is to take action. And we're going to need help on that. You see, we have opportunities to do things right now. Uh, in our church, in our community, in our, in our country, and in our world. You have given us the time and the talents and the means to, to make a difference. So encourage us to do that. Encourage us to claim what, you, what we now have and help us to put it to the most effective use, whether it's filling a box full of of uh, toiletries and toys for children, whether it's offering prayers for, for those who are sick and ailing and dealing with loss, or, or whether it's just treating our brothers and sisters, the folks we see every single day, with kindness and respect and compassion. Help us to be your people out there in the world you created. Guide and direct us and empower us so that we may be effective witnesses for you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. 
And now in the privacy of our own hearts, we're going to lift up to you the concerns that we heard shared, but we're also going to, going to lift up to you those things that weigh heavy on our hearts. Lord God, hear us as we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for listening to us and, and thank you for loving us as much as you do. But right now, thank you for responding to our needs. And we believe that you will because we've offered these prayers up in the name of the one who taught us his prayer, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now let's lift up to him our tithes and our offerings. Mary Sue, you, you really tried to get me to stop, but I was already in, the, I was already in, um, had started a prayer, yes. <laughs> Let, let's have a prayer together. Lord God, thank you for giving us a chance to, uh, to make this offering to you, guide and direct us so that it may be put to good and effective use. In the name of Christ, we pray, amen. Now you may be seated. <laughs> it, when, when, I was, uh, when I first started in, in ministry, I was doing a, a funeral. And this was when I was in Montana. And it was in a funeral home. And this was back in the, uh, I'm thinking the 80s. And so a lot of, this is before they had sound systems in funeral homes. And so you had a pianist or an organist that played. And in this particular funeral home, and we did very few funerals in funeral homes. Uh, we did mainly, they were in churches. Uh, but this one was, was in there. And the, I was standing in the front and everybody was in pews in front of me. And then the organist was in the back. And... Um, during the, before the funeral started, he had told me that we were going to have a solo in the, uh, in the funeral. The person was going to sing a solo and asked me where I wanted it. And I told him, let's, let's do it right here uh, after I finish uh, preaching my, the little message. Then we do the, the solo. And he said, well, just remember it uh, because I, we did a funeral a few months ago and the, the minister forgot the solo, and that was a real problem. And I said, Shit, no, I would never forget. I'm a professional. You know, I wouldn't forget anything like that. Gee, I'd been a minister for about four months. Uh, so I wouldn't forget that. You know, we know how to do it. And so I'm doing this, this funeral, and everything's going great. And, you know, you, I, I don't know if you all have ever done anything in public, you know, like speak, but when it's, when it's flowing, you know it. And it's, it's going. 
and man, it is, it is going. And so I was doing the funeral and I do the service, the sermon, and I am ready to say the prayer at the end. You know, and it's a, a my funeral services have a fairly long prayer after I give my little message. And so I, I'm, I'm ready. Let's pray. And I'm looking, and everybody is sitting like you are, looking at me. But I'm looking at the back, and the organist is doing this. <laughs> because I have forgotten the, the solo. And, and he is waving. Of course, he's doing this, and everybody is looking at me they're at a funeral. So they're looking very serious. And I'm seeing a guy in the back doing this. And uh, I mentioned it because Mary Sue, I felt the same thing when, when, when what you did. What do you do? Now, what do you do? Because I've already started a prayer. And, and so because I was a professional, because I was a professional, I did this. You know, I'm, I'm here. And so I do this. Because yeah, do you announce that the, there's going to be a song or do you just let him play? And so I'm like in a shooting gallery going back and forth. Thank you, Mary Sue. Uh, <laughs> you brought back really painful memories <laughs> this morning and I appreciate it. What's that? Glad to be of assistance. <laughs> I love you too. Uh, the, uh, the scripture lesson this morning comes from the 25th chapter of Matthew beginning with the first verse. And just as an, a little aside, the 25th chapter of Matthew is the last part of the gospel that Jesus offers before uh, the passion really begins, before the Lord's Supper. So this is the end of Jesus' teaching, his teaching of the uh, disciples, right before we start moving towards the cross. And so the stories in the 25th chapter of Matthew, are, I think, are really, really important. The lessons are really important, and there are three of them. And we're going to be looking at the first one. And I, I hope next week, you know, whoever's in the pulpit, because it's not me, is it Mary Sue? No. Uh, I hope they do the next one. Uh, because those three, those three stories are really, really important. I mean, it's the point Jesus wants to make before, you know, he kind of goes to the cross. But this is the first one. They're all related. You can go home and read them. Uh, th like I said, this is the first one. Chapter 25, verse 1. I'm going to be reading this from the contemporary English version. The kingdom of heaven is like what happened one night when ten girls took their oil lamps and went to a wedding to meet the groom. Five of the girls were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but no extra oil. The ones who were wise took along extra oil for their lamps. The groom was late arriving and the girls became drowsy and fell asleep. Then in the middle of the night, someone shouted, here's the groom, come to meet him. When the girls got up and started getting their lamps ready, the foolish one said to the others, let us have some of your oil, our lamps are going out. The girls who were wise answered, there's not enough oil for all of us. Go and buy some for yourselves. While the foolish girls were on their way to get some oil, the groom arrived. The girls who were ready went to the wedding and the doors were closed. Later, the other girls returned and shouted, Sir, sir, open the door for us. But the groom replied, I don't even know you. So my disciples, always be ready. You don't know the day or the time when all this will happen. Amen. Let's, let's pray together. Lord God, inspire us all that these words that we've heard and the words we're about to hear, that they may make a difference in the way we live. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Now, it, it seems like almost every week I, I'm sharing a little bit more about myself. I'm telling you something you may not already know. And, and this is going to be no different. Uh, you may not know this, I don't know how you would, but I have always enjoyed poetry. Not poker, but poetry. 
Of course, to be completely honest, I think there's a big difference between enjoy and love. Because I can't honestly say I love poetry. That wouldn't be, wouldn't be accurate. Because, and I gotta be honest with you, a lot of poetry I just plain don't understand. Uh, it, it, it's over, over my head. But give me something by Edgar Allan Poe, you know, like The Raven, or Edward Arlington Robinson, or my gosh, Robert Frost. You know, man, that's good stuff. I mean, how can you beat Robert Frost's little poem, Fire and Ice? You've heard Fire and Ice? Some say the world will end in fire, some say ice. From what I've tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. Fire and ice, man, that's good. And tell me that's not applicable to what we see going on in the world right now. So I, I really enjoy good poetry, or poetry that I, I enjoy. And although I like these other guys, these other guys are really fine, my absolute favorite poet is an Englishman named T.S. Eliot. Now, have you ever heard of T.S. Eliot? Okay, good. Now, to him, now to me, that, what he wrote was, was wonderful. As a matter of fact, have you, if you've ever heard the musical Cats, or either seen it or heard it or seen the movie, my gosh, the movie. Uh, if you've ever, ever seen that, uh, the lyrics to most of the songs in Cats are T.S. Eliot poems. The, the, the actual words that T.S. Eliot wrote when he wrote a collection of cat-related poems to a cat-loving friend of his. So, I mean, T.S. Eliot, I mean, he, he's pretty big stuff. And I'll tell you, and you can look, at, look this up when you get home, every time I read another poem of his called The Journey of the Magi, it always gives me, gives me chills. But of everything he wrote, everything T.S. Eliot wrote, and he wrote poetry and he wrote plays, the poem that has meant the most to me personally was actually the very first one he published. And he published it in 1915. And the title was The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock. The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock. Now, I've got to tell you, that poem has always meant a lot to me because I think I can kind of identify with it, at least what, what happens in the poem. And I'll tell you, the fact that I can identify with it, man, that scares the pudding out of me. Now, if you don't already know or have surmised, the, this poem is about a, an individual man. It's about a man. In fact, he ends up speaking the poem himself. And the man's name is J. Alfred Prufrock. And this guy lives his entire life believing that there will always be time. That he'll always have time. Always have time to do the stuff he wants to do, all the stuff he thinks he should do, all the stuff. There'll always be time. For example, in the poem itself, he says this. He says, there will be time, there will be time to prepare a face to meet the faces that you meet. There will be time to murder and create and time for all the works and days of hands that lift and drop a question on your plate. Time for you and time for me and time yet for a hundred indecisions and for a hundred visions and revisions before the taking of toast and tea. You see, for J. Alfred Prufrock, there's always going to be time. There's always going to be time. And because this is what he believes, J. Alfred Prufrock ends up doing what? Nothing. He ends up doing nothing. And I'll tell you, that's reflected in how he ends up seeing his life. At one point in the poem, he says, I, I have measured, I can measure out my life in coffee spoons. Jeez, how depressing is that? I can measure my life 
in coffee spoons. And in another place he says, I should have been a pair of ragged claws scuttling across silent seas. The floors of silent seas. You see, he believes that there is nothing that must be done today that can't be put off until when? Tomorrow, right? And we all know that tomorrow never comes. You get the idea. And like I said, I can kind of identify with that attitude, that perspective. And frankly, that scares me that I can identify with it so well. But I'll tell you, I don't think I'm all that unique in this. I mean, don't a lot of folks, don't a lot of us, make that same kind of assumption? And not only do, it, we, not only do we do it in our daily lives, we also do it in the way we approach our Christian living. I mean, we all know what we're supposed to do, right? We all know what God has called us to do. What has God called us to do? Jesus gave us two commands, right? Two commands. What were the two commands he gave us? He said, these are the two things I want you to do. We are to what? Love God and love your neighbor. Two things. And how do we love our neighbors? Well, when our neighbor is hungry... We do what? Feed them. When they're thirsty, give them something to drink. When they're a stranger, welcome them. When they're naked, clothe them, please. We care for folks who are sick. We visit people in prison. How do we know that's the way to love, love our neighbor? Because Jesus says so. In fact, guess where he says so? The 25th chapter. That's the last thing he teaches his disciples. You see, we know that this is something we're supposed to do, right? So now we got the $64 question, right? Why are we, why am I not going to do those things today? <laughs> because we can do it tomorrow! Man, we got football games on later today. Yeah, there's other stuff going on. We'll have time to do them when? Tomorrow, right? But more than that, we'll have, and we'll have the ability to do those things after the holiday. You know, we got a lot of stuff to do before Christmas. So we'll have the ability to do it after the holiday. And I'll tell you something, we'll have the means to do it after this big pandemic finally breaks. Right? Why do we make that assumption? Because just like J. Alfred Prufrock, we assume there will be time. And of course, Prufrock was right. When we make that assumption, he would, we're right until we're not. I mean, things change, don't they? Situations happen. Options disappear. And then when it comes to living the kind of lives we have the opportunity to live right now, we are about as useful as a crab crawling on the bottom of the ocean. Because we just plain lost our chance. And you know, isn't that the very thing Jesus described in the passage we read this morning? You know about the ten girls who took their oil lamps and went to a wedding to meet the groom? Remember, Jesus said, there were ten girls, right? But five of them were foolish. Five of them were foolish. Because they took their lamps, but what? No extra oil. Now they had oil in their lamps, but they brought no extra oil, right? And although I don't know about y'all, I can understand why they brought their lamps full of oil without extra oil. I can understand why they did it. I mean, they made the same kind of assumptions we make about our time and our ability and our means, didn't they? 
I mean, they must have assumed that the groom would arrive when? On time. It was his fault. Groom would be there on time, right? All grooms are supposed to be there on time. And if he had been on time, then they assumed that they had plenty of oil, right? And if they had plenty of oil and the groom had arrived on time, have, how many of y'all, Dorothy, you had a wedding at, at your place not, not long ago, September. right? September, right, in September. Um, and so, and, and you had a little party, right? Did y'all dance at the party? Did you dance? Chicken, did you do the chicken dance? They didn't. That's really a shame that they didn't do chicken dance. Well, you're at a party, a wedding party, and everybody's up and they're doing the chicken dance. Have, can you imagine how you do a chicken dance? Carrying a whole bunch of extra oil for your lamp? Talk about a drag. You see, that's what those young girls probably assumed. And I'll tell you, everything would have been frozen peaches and cream if those assumptions had been true, right? If those assumptions had been true, the groom would have been on, on time, they'd have had plenty of oil, and they could have done a chicken dance without getting the, oil, the floor all slippery. If the assumptions had been true, everything would have been great. The only problem was they weren't. And the groom was late. And those five girls ran out of oil for their lamps. And as they were scrambling around to get a little bit more, they were locked out of the party. Sorry about your luck. Of course, what they did had nothing to do with luck. And I'll tell you, that was shown by the other five girls that Jesus mentioned in the story. Girls that Jesus called, if the one group was foolish, Jesus called these five girls what? Wise, right? You see, instead of assuming that everything would just work out the way they expected, these five young ladies made a pretty important decision and took some very definite action. I mean, I want you to think about it. They decided that they weren't going to assume. They weren't going to make the assumption. They weren't going to be assume that the groom was going to, going to be on schedule. They weren't going to make that assumption. Therefore, they already had all the oil they needed. Therefore, they could enter the party with their lamps lit. They didn't make that. They decided they weren't going to make that assumption. In other words, they decided not to view their oil like we often view our time and our abilities and our means. And instead, they took some very interesting action. They decided to do what? To bring along extra oil. To bring along extra oil that they may never use, but they might. And so when the groom was delayed, they were ready. And when he finally came, and understand, all ten girls, it wasn't like they were sit, waiting. They were awake. All ten girls fell asleep. But when the groom came and the girls woke up, they were ready to grab their lamps and start to party down. And isn't that exactly what happened? Jesus said, while the foolish girls were on their way to get some more, the groom arrived. The girls who were ready went into the wedding. The doors and the doors were closed. Now that's what happened in the story, right? And I think Jesus knew that this story applies to us because at the very end he said, so my disciples always be ready. You don't know the day or the time when all this will happen. You see, there is absolutely no reason why we should be like any of those foolish girls. Instead, as it relates to what God has called us to do and what God has called us to be, we can reject those assumptions we just love to make. 
you know, those assumptions that make us feel real comfortable and also free up, free up a lot of time right now. For example, we can reject the assumption that we are always going to have plenty of time. We're always going to have plenty of time. And you know why we can reject that assumption? Because we don't. We don't. Man, our time is limited. Like I said a little while earlier, like you shared when we were praying. Man, death can come quickly. And we may not expect it. And those around us may not. And I'll tell you, whether it's Jesus coming to us or us going up to him, our time here on earth will have an end. It's limited. And if we, if we live as though we believe it isn't, we are acting like what? We are acting like fools. Our time is limited. And so are our abilities. I mean, we are a pretty mature bunch here this morning, with maybe one or two exceptions. Right? Let me ask you. How many of y'all are in the same physical shape you were in, let's say, 30 years ago? Now, I, I know you are. <laughs> I know that you've shared with me. You are. How many of y'all are in the same physical shape you were 30 years ago? Now, understand, <laughs> I was only five years old at the time. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you something, I'm not. And is your memory as good now as it was when you were 25? Frankly, I don't remember. It may be. I just forget. What's that? I said mine is, I think. <laughs> well, good. yeah, that's, I think that says it all. Uh, and, and even though we have acquired a whole bunch of wisdom, right? That's what people tell you. Is the compensation for getting old? Well, you've acquired wisdom. You're wise now. Even though we've acquired all this wisdom, right now, have we done all those things we want to accomplish? We wanted to accomplish when we were young? I forget. <laughs> Danny, this is much better than what I wrote. <laughs> I forget too. You know, let's, let's get real. Our ability to do things changes with time. And when you're talking about means, and you know means is a, is a nice word to refer to another word that starts with M. And what's that other word that starts with M that we don't like to talk about? Because money, thank you very much. As it relates to money, I'm going to let you in on some personal things with me. I have a daughter who just entered college. Right now, we have a brand new hot water heater that we had to purchase in uh, August. In, in the next oh, week or so, Charm Builders will be starting to replace a roof because there were shingles on our front yard. And the roof is old. And, and this for us, for me, is the cherry on top of the Sunday. My severance package ends at the beginning of February. And that includes my health insurance. Happy days are here again. I don't have the means I had in the past. Our means are limited. And if we assume that any of those three things aren't, we are acting like fools. We need to reject those assumptions. 
But that's not all we can do. Once we've, we've removed those rose-colored glasses that enable us to kind of wander through life and put things off, we can start taking action right now. You know, just like those five wise girls in the story. For example, I want you to look around right now. Just look around. Now, if, um, thank you. <laughs> now, I may, be, I may be wrong, but I think everybody here this morning is above the ground. There's nobody here underground, right? All right? Let's hope not. Yeah. That means we've been given something very precious by God. We've been given what? Time when? Now. We have time right now to bring glory to God and to show love for our neighbors. Right now. Maybe not tomorrow, but we got it right now. And even though we may not be as strong and we may not be as sharp and we may not be as active as we once were, you know something? We can still make a telephone call when somebody is lonely, can't we? And if we got a family who's grieving, I'll bet you we could make a casserole and take it over to them. And my gosh, we can do something as simple as just say hello or smile to a person we pass on the street. And you know how much that costs? Nothing. You see, we can use what we have right now. And instead of worrying about what we had or thinking about what we might get, we can take the time and we can take the talents and we can take the money we've got at this moment and use them as best we can. Maybe best of all, bring them together and use it as a group. But we can use them as best we can to make the world in which we live a better place. We can do that if we claim the opportunities we now have. And I'll tell you, if we do, man, we're going to find out that that, those, that party, you know, behind the locked doors is a whole lot better than we could have even, even imagined. As a matter of fact, I think we're going to feel a sense of satisfaction and a sense of fulfillment that sadly, our friend from the poem never felt. Now, you remember how I started this by talking about a poem. You remember what the poem's name is? No. <laughs> As an old teacher, that's what we call affirming moments. <laughs> no, but you, I'm not going to, I don't want to be harsh on you, because you did remind me not to start a prayer earlier, so that was a big plus. The, the, so, the uh, poem was The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock. And you remember we were talking about Prufrock and how, what was Proof, J. Alfred Prufrock's problem? What was his issue, his attitude? He could always do it tomorrow. There would always be time. And that's what he lived, that's the assumption he made as he lived his life. Well, I want you to listen to how the poem ends. I grow old. I grow old. I shall wear the bottoms of my trousers rolled. Shall I part my hair behind? Do I dare eat a peach? I shall wear white flannel trousers and walk upon the beach. I have heard the mermaids singing each to each. I do not think they will sing for me. I have seen them riding seaward on the waves, combing the white hair of the waves waves blown back, when the wind blows the water white and black. They have lingered in the chambers of the sea by sea girls wreathed with seaweed red and brown, till human voices wake us and we drown. Brothers and sisters, Reject the assumptions. Claim the opportunities. And for God's sake, 
Don't be like proof rock. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord God, you've given us what we have right now to be used right now. Help us to not assume that we can put it off. Inspire us, empower us that we claim the opportunities we have today and not tomorrow. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Now, before we stand up and sing this last song, which, by the way, is, works really well with what we've been talking about because the Holy Spirit is something that really can help us do what we've been talking about doing. I want to offer you all this invitation. If there's anybody here who might feel the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and is interested in how he or she might respond, talk to me after the service. If you've got a question about the sermon or the service itself, talk to me about that as well. Now, let's all stay in and let's sing hymn 250, Come Holy Spirit. I still had a stanza to go. <laughs> but we're good. Well, we're good. We're good. Hey, I'll tell you something, though. That was an outstanding choice. Uh, let's give Dorothy a round of applause. She, no, 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 seriously. She has picked, the, the last couple of weeks, she picked the hymns, and I think she has done an outstanding job, uh, and I really appreciate it. Uh, even though we would have sung hymn number one and number two because I misunderstood, <laughs> I didn't read the whole thing. But I think she's done, a, you're doing a great job. Uh, so thank you. Personally, thank you. Uh, one other thing that I want to mention, uh, 
it, I record, if you've noticed, I always have my little recorder because I record all the services. And some of y'all know this because you follow me. Uh, the, uh, all the services are recorded and I upload them. So you can find them on YouTube, you can find them on Facebook, uh, you can find them in one of, a one of the blogs that I sort of manage. Uh, if you want to find them on uh, YouTube, uh, go just to YouTube, type in Hopedale, and it will take you to a bunch of Hopedale Presbyterian Church or the Presbyterian Church of Hopedale. It'll take you to these services because the sermon is up and also the services. If you want, you go to you can go to a Facebook page, either my page, Pastor Ed Rudiger, or a page called The Net, a community for seekers and believers and seekers. Uh, and you can find the service and the sermons along with other things. Devotions and st Bible studies and that I've led in the past. And, uh, what's that? And jokes. and jokes. My dad joke each day. So you, you'll find little videos when I'm walking my dog. I tell a dad joke every day. And so you'll find all that kind of stuff. Uh, next time I'm here, I'll even put the... the uh, them in the bulletin so you know where to go and you not only can you find them but if you if a sermon or a message has been meaningful to you you can refer it to somebody else uh, and uh, you know there's even a site where it's written down well on Facebook it's all written so you can refer it either as an audio or you can refer it as a written text so but I'll, I'll leave that for you all later everything I do I record uh, and upload so, with that in mind, yes, every, yeah. She said, <laughs> Mary Sue, Mary Sue, everything. <laughs> so, let's, now, brothers and sisters, go now in peace and be challenged, my friends, be challenged to reject those assumptions that lead us to putting things off. And claim the opportunities that God has given you right now to be his people. To make this world a better place. And to inspire this walk, receive the blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Amen.